So uh, I wanted to make a comment about previous class. So I hadn't written one condition. So we need uh, for the con convex game. So the theorem was. ui convex and ci u minus i also convex right and then there was a we we, no, we didn't prove it but uh, what i had mentioned was there exists a nash equilibrium uh, we need additional condition so so either of these so either ui is compact or if or limit ui goes to infinity of ci ui u minus i should also be equal to infinity so the the cost function should go to infinity if ui is going to infinity either that condition should hold true or ui should be a compact set okay then there exists a nash equilibrium so i forgot to mention these con these conditions so please note it in your in your notes but in the video i have uh, added that as a comment box so you will see it in the video okay so now uh, today i want to talk very briefly about stackelberg game and then we'll talk about uh, bayesian games So Okay so in Stackelberg games uh for in continuous kernel uh the idea is you have u1 so u1 u2 these are convex sets you can assume it to be compact also uh, but it's not really required because remember in stackelberg game the notion of equilibrium is slightly different okay so u1 u2 are convex set c1 ci is a function of u1 and u2 or ci is a function from u1 cross u2 to r okay and we say that u1 star is stackelberg equilibrium for player 1 if u1 star equals argen u1 in u1 soup of u2 in best response to of u1 c1 u1 u2 okay how do we define this best response map or uh the reaction curve so let me just write it as a reaction curve r2 u1 r soup of u2 in u2 of c2 u1 u2 oh yeah arg in yes arg in now of course you could have stackelberg game where these infimum and supremum do not exist so you have to work with epsilon stackelberg equilibrium uh and these kind of games are useful in when you are considering adversarial situations okay so when you are considering adversarial situation the leader is usually the defender so if you are in a battlefield you decide what what technology you want to take to the battlefield okay so that decides your set convex set u1 as well as u1 star right and what the adversary is going to do is he has his own action set 
adversary has his own action set, he will play according to a follower in those situations. Okay, so depending upon how you want to formulate the problem, you can formulate it either as a game between the attacker and the defender, or you can model it as a Stackelberg equilibrium or Stackelberg game if uh, you think that the defender is a fairly strong, technologically strong uh, player as compared to the attacker. Okay. Any question on Stackelberg game? Okay, so let's now talk about Bayesian games. Okay, and the idea is as follows. Okay, so let's say we are in 1965. Okay, uh, and the idea is as follows. So you are sitting in a classroom in 1965 and you are thinking about the situation that so far whenever we are talking about games we have implicitly assumed that the players know each other's payoff functions exactly they know each other's preferences so no remember that preferences are ordered by the payoff function or the utility functions right so the underlying assumption so far in our study has been I know what my payoff matrix is, you know what your payoff matrix is, but I also know your payoff matrix, you know my payoff matrix, and infinite, and go under, I mean, and there is this infinite hierarchy of beliefs, so you know what I know, I know what you know, and so on and so forth, right? Uh, but that's not always going to be the case. Uh, when you enter a restaurant, you don't know whether the food that you're going to order will be good or not, right? But with some probability based on the reviews, you kind of know that 40% of the people have liked this place and 60% of the, of the people have not liked this place. So you have some statistical information, uh, but you don't quite know what payoff you're going to get once you enter the restaurant, right? So there are situations where you probably don't know. I mean, it's not like you don't know. Uh, you know the payoffs, but there is some uncertainty about those payoffs. Okay, so to give you an example, uh, you're playing a game and your cost matrix is A, the other person's cost matrix could be B1 or B2 with probability 1 by 2 and with probability 1 over 2. Okay, and you just don't know that. Uh, I mean, you know B1, you know B2, you know the fact that it is with probability 1 over 2 and 1 over 2. Okay, so you know certain things. But you don't quite know whether you are playing this game or whether you are playing that game, okay? And the same thing could happen for the other player. The other player would not know whether you are playing this game, right? You could have A1 and A2, and that player wouldn't know whether you are playing A1 or A2, okay? So what Harsai Harsai mentioned, or what he thought, was we will assume that each player has some private information, and he termed that information as his type. Okay, so what is a private information? It's the information that you have, but the other player doesn't have. Okay, so that's private information of the players. And what he said was, you know what your type is, you know what your private information is, but you don't know what other person's type is. So in particular, let's say theta i is the set of types of player i. And you know what your theta i is, so theta i is in theta i. So this is known to, so player i knows theta i, but others player don't know what theta i is. Okay, so player j doesn't know what theta i is. Known by player i, unknown 
or possibly unknown to player to other players yes okay so they will this will be the distribution over theta i So, and then each player will have this probability distribution over theta minus i given theta i, okay. So, player i will have belief on what the type distribution or what the type of other player is given his own type, okay. So that's something that every player has. So, so this is the belief of player I on other players types given this type. So the question is, uh, how would players decide? Well, well, we haven't yet introduced the cost function. So let's say AI is the action space, action space, and CI is a function from theta cross A to R, okay, where theta is the product space, theta 1, cross theta n and a is the product space a1 a n okay so the question is uh, is this game description complete so the way harsai is modeling this game is each player has certain information that is known only to that player but other players have some sort of distribution over the types of uh, other players, right? So everyone has distribution over the types of other players given his own type. So is that, uh, would that be sufficient? Yes. No, it is private information, not perfect information. distribution over the, uh, it could, yes, it could be. So for instance, remember, uh, theta appears in the cost, in cost function explicitly. So it could be distribution over the cost function also. Theta could encode information about the distribution of the cost function, okay. Uh, so if you, so to give you a real situation or scenario to think about, uh, you know what your abilities are as a, uh, electrical engineer okay so you know what your abilities are but I don't know but what I know that in electrical engineering okay 50% of the people love mathematics 50% of the people don't okay so I kind of have some type distribution uh, so if I have this class of so in the first class okay everybody was completely uh, I mean, people were com coming into this class almost like uh, it was a random random variable, right? They just thought this class looks interesting, I'll just go and enter the class and sit in it. So what I know at that time is 50% of the class it likes mathematics and the other 50% doesn't like mathematics, okay? And so I have to make sure that my lecture is such. <laughs> so people who love mathematics stay in the lecture, those who don't, <laughs> they drop the class after the first lecture, okay? So that's so that's, that's really the situation that I'm considering. There is, uh, there are players, they know their own type, but other players do not know what their type is, okay? And each player, based on his type, makes some sort of assumption about the belief. So he's not making an assumption. This is something that comes from some side channel, okay? Some sort of, uh, 
so so you do you do uh, some sort of survey in order to figure out what the distribution over the types of other player is okay based on your own type okay and what my question is is the description of the game complete uh, just by having this the belief on other players type uh, so any thoughts sorry i didn't get your question uh no usually usually it is minimizing the expected cost not the worst case a worst case would happen in case of learning okay but not not in this situation uh so here is the problem okay based on my type i have this belief but other players also have some beliefs right on their on what my type is okay assuming two players so the other player has some belief over my type but this information is not encoded in my belief okay somehow my belief is only on the distribution of the other person's type but the other person's belief is not included as part of my belief so i don't know how that other person is going to behave right because in order for me to predict how the other person is going to behave i also should know what he believes right and vice and vice versa right and then you get this hierarchy that you have this problem that somehow this entire hierarchy of beliefs that you had initially assumed for the earlier game is kind of uh, getting disintegrated in this problem okay so what his idea was and that's the nobel prize winning idea okay what his idea was that this conditional distribution should be coming from a from a unique probability distribution so what he said is beliefs have to be consistent beliefs so these are beliefs so beliefs have to be consistent that is there exist a distribution p over the type space such that pi theta minus i theta i equals p of theta i theta minus i over p of theta i okay this is the base base from base theorem okay and this is the nobel prize winning idea okay. 93 or 94 okay so there is some uncertainty about the date in my mind uh so yeah this becomes common knowledge p is common knowledge so everyone can compute other person's belief and so on and so forth okay so this becomes the common knowledge so so how should you think about this game so there is one way of think one way of thinking about it is that each person has a belief and we are assuming that the belief has to be consistent the other way to think about this game is there is nature who has his own strategy where if you have two players let's say you have two players the nature picks theta 1 for one player and theta 2 for the other player and lets them know about it but then player 1 doesn't know what theta 2 is and player 2 doesn't know what theta 1 is right so he ha naturally has to create a belief about so has to come up with the conditional distribution and this is the conditional distribution okay so in some sense you are adding nature as a third player in this particular game which is assigning the types or the private information to every player any question on that question 
So, <laughs> so what we are, what what's happening here is you can think of it uh, in two ways. First is that the beliefs have to be consistent. So players are forming their belief independently, but they have to be consistent in order for this game theoretic thing to work through. Uh, the other way to think about it is that the nature is a new player who is added to the game, and the nature, according to this distribution, he the nature uh, decides the type of each player and lets the each player know what his type is. Okay, so in some sense, nature decided that everybody who goes in electrical engineering, 50% of them have to like maths and 50% of them have to not like maths. Okay, so nature decided it, and then it handed out a, a note to each of the players, each of the students entering the E department, that you will like math, you will not like math, you will like math, you will not like math, and so on. Okay, and then. Then, based on that information, based on that that piece of paper that the nature handed to each student, the student is going to create a belief or have a belief about what other students are going to, uh, what what their preferences are going to be. So, what should be the definition of a Bayesian Nash equilibrium? So, the definition is, so what's the strategy set? So, my strategy set would be pure strategy, okay? So gamma i which will map theta i to a i. Okay, so that's the strategy, a pure strategy for player i. So player i is going to look at its type and then decide what action it wants to take. So the definition of Bayesian Nash is as follows. Uh, so gamma 1 star, gamma n star is a Bayesian Nash equilibrium if and only if expected value of Ci with respect to gamma 1 star i theta 1 gamma n star theta n given theta i has to be less than equal to expected value of Ci gamma 1 star theta 1 and then gamma i minus 1 star theta i minus 1 gamma i theta i Okay, there is conditioning with respect to theta i here. Uh, I wish this was, if I could move things around on the board after writing it. Uh, so there is this, this is theta i, this is theta i. Okay, so that's the definition of Bayesian Nash equilibrium. So given your type, uh, and given the strategies of all other players, you are minimizing the expected cost the conditional expected cost with respect to all possible strategies that you could have taken. Okay. Any question? Yeah. The nature was correlation device, yes. But remember, uh, in the correlated equilibrium, you wanted to design this P itself, right? In this case, this P is handed out to you. You don't have the liberty to decide, okay? And of course, in, so, so for instance, in traffic light, this P has been designed, sorry? Yes, 
Yes. And yes, and well, in some sense, your type would be what color of light you are looking at it, and the action is that you stop. Okay, but of course, uh, in that case, you know, this, this strategy set is sort of identity. Right? If you see red light, you stop. If you see green light, you go. Right? That's the equilibrium. So, so, so does that answer your question? This was designed in correlated equilibrium. In this case, it's not designed. Okay? And in correlated equilibrium, you were recommended an action, whereas in this case, uh, you are recommended a type. I mean, some you have a type. You have some private information. Okay? It's not. It's not necessarily an action. So, in in one sense, in correlated equilibrium, your type space and action space has to be identical. In this case, that's not supposed to be the case. They can be different. Any other question? Yes. Oh, I see. Good point. Theta. Thank you. Yeah. The cost depends on theta. Okay, because ci is a function of theta cross a. So this is the actions, and this is the theta. Okay. Any other question? Thanks for that correction. It has to be a theta here, and this should hold for all i. So let's look at an example, which will uh, which will be very close to your day-to-day -day life. <laughs> so the example is formation of study group, okay, among students. Okay, so the idea is as follows. You have two players, player 1 and player 2. Each player knows how much he values academics. Okay? And there is some assignment that is given to them. They have to do it in a team. Uh, and there is some amount of effort that is needed to solve the assignment. The question is, because they are in a team, even if one person solves the assignment, both of them get the same mark. Right, and they, their uh, aggregate gate reflects that. So that's the problem. So you have two players, players one and player two, and theta i is uniform distribution between zero and one, which is the academic uh, ambition of player i. Okay. So if the ambition is zero. The person doesn't care about academics whatsoever. If the theta is equal to 1, the person really cares about his academics, his or her academics, performance. Okay? And then there is some cost C. This C is different from that CI, by the way. We will construct CI. So there is some cost of, cost of uh, effort. And I'm going to call it C. Okay? Uh, So here is the cost function of the player. So ci, which is a function only of theta i in this case. Okay, so it's not a function of theta one and theta two, only a function of theta i, a one and a two, which is given by theta i square minus c if a i equals to effort. So Theta i square is the payoff after completing the assignment. Okay, so the higher the theta i is, the higher the person feels happy about completing the assignment. Theta i square, if a i was equal to shirk and a minus i was equal to work or effort and zero. If a i equals to a minus i equals to shirk. Okay, so if both the people didn't do the assignment, they get zero grade, and their cost is zero. Actually, I, it should be payoff. Let me 
let me write it as u of i because this is payoff. Okay, their payoff is equal to zero. So what would be the equilibrium for this case? Let's try and compute the equilibrium. Wh what do we have to compute in order to compute the equilibrium? Reaction curve, right? Best response. So let's look at best response. So let's say, let's say we want to find the best response of player one. So the first question, so in order to compute the Bayesian Nash, the first question that we need to answer is what's the best response strategy of both the players. So find best response of player one and best response of player two, okay? But what is the problem in finding the best response? So remember in the previous case, we, so in the case of mixed strategies, in the case of pure strategies, we knew, we found best response as a function of the action of the other player, right? But in this case, uh, it's a simultaneous game, so, game, so uh, we, the player wouldn't know the action of the other player. But unfortunately, player two cannot even predict the action of the other player. Why? Because he doesn't know what the type of the other player is. Right? So this best response that we will find out will be with respect to the probability that the other person is going to share or the other person is going to put in the effort. So. What's the best response? Okay. Uh, so we want to find, so given that probability of A2 equals to effort, what is the best response of player one. If the other player is going to put in the effort, the expected cost is, what's the expected cost? So if A1 equal to effort, then the expected cost is theta 1 square minus c uh, plus, no, that's it, right? Uh, sorry? Oh, yes. Payoff. If A1 was equal to sure, then expected payoff is theta one square mi theta one square multiplied by the probability of a two equals to effort plus zero multiplied by probability that a two equals to sure. Okay. So what's the best response? If player one has to choose whether to put in the effort or whether to share, what would be the best response? So effort is the best response if theta one square minus C is greater than equal to theta one square multiplied by probability of A2 equals to effort. Okay? Or in other words, theta 1 has to be greater than equal to C1 
थ्री ओवर वन माइनस प्रॉबिलिटी ऑफ ए टू इक्वल टू एफ ओके दिस इज द बेस्ट रिस्पॉन्स सो वॉट इज वॉट इज द सोल्यूशन सॉरी ओ स्क्वेर रूट ओके सो माई बी आर वन ऑफ वट एवर द प्रॉबिलिटी ऑफ ए टू इज गिवेन बाय what is the best response effort if theta 1 is greater than equal to square root c over 1 minus some probability and shirk if theta 1 is less than the c over 1 minus this probability right this probability probability of a2 equals to effort this type of strategy by the way is known as threshold based strategy so if your acad if a, the person if player once academic uh, uh sincerity is above certain threshold he is going to put in the effort if it is below that threshold he is not going to put in the effort he or she is not going to put in the effort so won't do the assignment okay by the way in classroom i decide this okay so i have to make sure that c is <laughs> C is large enough that it gives you education, but it's not so large that it, you know, every it incentivizes everyone to shirk and not do the assignment. Uh, okay. So right. So what do we have to do now? We have to find a Nash equilibrium, which means gamma one star has to be the best response with respect to the second player's. strategy and gamma 2 star has to be the best response with respect to the first player strategy so let's see how do we find that out so my gamma 1 star of theta 1 is effort if theta 1 is greater than equal to theta 1 hat and uh, uh shirk if theta 1 is less than theta 1 hat and what else do we know theta 1 hat uh so by the way this is also going to be the uh this is also going to be the best response of player 2 okay so gamma 2 star of theta 2 will be effort if theta 2 is greater than equal to theta 2 hat and shirk sure if theta 2 is less than theta 2 hat so what's the probability that a1 is going to be effort any thoughts how do we compute this probability based on this gamma 1 star so how do we how do we find out this let's use the bayes theorem probability that a1 is equal to effort given theta1 multiplied by what integral f theta1 d theta1 right 0 to 1 what does that turn out to be 
this is this is conditional distribution right conditional distribution multiplied by the marginal and i'm integrating it that will give me the distribution of a1 equals to effort so that's equal to 1 minus theta 1 hat is that true okay is this clear to everyone sorry oh so what is the probability that a1 is equal to effort so the probability is probability of a1 equal to effort given theta 1 multiplied by the distribution function pdf of theta 1 into d theta 1 okay if it was a discrete variable i would have a summation here instead of integral and i'll have probability of theta 1 sum over the entire type space oh and the next step okay so so what is the probability that a1 is e a1 is equal to effort it's the same as probability of theta 1 is greater than equal to theta 1 hat so let me write it this is the same as probability of theta 1 is greater than equal to theta 1 hat which is 1 minus theta 1 hat and the same thing here the probability that a2 is equal to effort equals to 1 minus theta 2 hat okay so that's good we still haven't yet figured out how to find out this equilibrium but we knew that we have found out this quantity right we know that what probability of a1 equal to effort is and we know what probability of a2 equal to effort is so let's plug it in here so we see what do we see we know that theta 1 hat equals to square root of c over 1 minus probability of a2 equals to effort right all of you remember this so this is equal to c over 1 minus 1 minus theta 2 hat right which is equal to square root of c over theta 2 hat and the same thing holds for theta 2 hat as well so theta 2 hat equals to square root of c over theta 1 hat so does that solve our problem all we need to find is theta 1 hat theta 2 hat okay all we need to find are these thresholds so let's see what the threshold turn out to be So I have theta 1 hat square theta 2 hat equal to C theta 2 hat square theta 1 hat equals to C these two equations give us theta 1 hat equals to cube root of C and theta 2 hat equals to cube root of C. okay so what does that tell us that each person in the Bayesian Nash so this is the unique Bayesian Nash equilibrium right just plug in the value of C let's plug in the value of C 1 over 3 here Okay. So that's the unique Bayesian Nash equilibrium in this particular game. So if the person cares about his education and the cost raised to 1 over 3, so his caring is greater than the cost raised to 1 over 3, the person is going to do the effort, put in the effort, otherwise he is not going to put in the effort. Okay. So each player, so how did we come up with this solution? Each player had an expectation of whether the other person is going to put in the effort or not so that's captured by this probability and based on that that player decided the prob the threshold above which if his academic uh, 
sincerity is above that threshold, he will do the homework, otherwise he will not do the homework, he or she will not do the homework. So this is a general methodology for computing Bayesian Nash equilibrium. The, person, the purpose of this particular example and doing it in all detail was to show you how you would go about computing a Bayesian Nash equilibrium for a, for a general problem. Uh, but of course, it also tells you exactly how people are going to behave if you put them in a group, ask them to do an assignment. This is exactly how they are going to behave uh, in this game. Now my question is, uh, any question? Okay. So my question is as follows. Now again, what is between this game, okay, where there is an underlying random variable theta i, what is the difference between this game versus a game where player 2 did not have any theta i? And all he had was that there is some probability. Does not have type. Act randomly so that. Some sort of private information about the 